What's up my friends, welcome back to another video and today we are taking a look at Straight Ahead Sample's newest release called Atomic Big Band. And this is a long awaited library I think for the jazz world in general. Um, it's very, very difficult I think we all know to sample a big band properly and have all the swing articulations, have them all sounding very smooth and natural and just kind of idiomatic to the jazz um, world, right? And Straight Ahead Samples, if you're not aware, has been working on this exact problem for the past couple of years or so, starting with Birth of the Trumpet and now culminating into Atomic Big Band. And for me, this is sort of like a dream library, personally. When I heard they announced, uh, they, or they were announcing this, the product coming up, uh, I just couldn't wait because um, I personally love Big Band. I was inspired by Michael Buble growing up, and I've just loved those you know, lively big band arrangements. And it was always so difficult to mock them up properly using sampled instruments, but this library kind of turned that concept on its head. So I'm so excited to share it with you. A uh, big thanks to Straight Ahead Samples for sending me a copy for review for you guys. And I'm, yeah, again, super excited to dive in. So let's just kind of take a look here and then we'll uh, go into the samples as well. And we'll play around with the patches and hear how that all goes. So here you can see we have the, uh, the, the order page. At the time of this recording, it is almost uh, over in terms of the pre-order pricing, it's uh, currently $429 and the regular price will be $100 more, $529. And in this library, you get all 13 main instruments or horns in the big band. So you have four trumpets, including the lead trumpet. You get the four trombones, including the lead trombone and the bass trombone, two altos, two tenors, and one berry. So that comes into five uh, saxophones. And then there are all new recordings, which were not in previous libraries. And then of course we have the smart delay concept, which is revolutionary, very innovative. And then, yeah, th this library is basically intended for those loud shout courses, if you will, like those huge soaring lines that you don't really get from other libraries. So let's kind of dive in uh, really quickly though, before we hear those sounds uh, specifically, in case you don't have my sample library buyer's guide yet, I just recently updated it with this library and a couple of others. I would love for you to have it. It's a completely free guide that goes over all my personal recommendations for sample libraries, including jazz libraries, ethnic libraries, but I've also included the orchestral sections as well, like strings, winds, brass, and percussion. It's 100% free. If you want to click the first link in the box below, it'll take you straight there where you can grab it and uh, you can keep it by your side anytime you want to refer to my personal recommendations if you're on the market for a new library. Okay, so let's kind of dive in. Let's take a look. And uh, here we have, I just love how they use different colors for all these libraries, but here's the Atomic Big Band. We have the multis, which I'm not going to demonstrate today because uh, Trey from Straight Ahead Samples um, told me he was kind of tweaking them a little bit. So maybe in a separate video or in one of their walkthrough videos, they'll probably demonstrate the multis. Um, but you can see they have the Atomic Sax section, so all five saxes. They have the trumpet section, trombone section individually. And then they have the pop horn trio, 70s pop horn trio, which is kind of cool pop horn quartet, and then a modern funk horns patch as well. So you can always drag those in and uh, you have those preloaded right away. So then you don't have to drag the patches in individually. And then in terms of the regular patch structure, we have all 13 horns separated individually. And it's as simple as just clicking, double clicking, and then having them appear in contact, or you just drag them in yourself. And do note that uh, all of their horn libraries are included for the contact player as well. So you don't do not need the full version of contact to run these libraries. <clears throat> okay, so you can see here, I've actually mocked up a little show, show chorus from uh, my song, Get Out, which actually features live players, but I wanted to mock it up here to see how close it kind of gets. So I'll show you that at the very end. Um, but let's kind of go through first and hear the instruments in real time. I've loaded up one from each section, the lead alto sax, the lead trumpet, and the lead trombone. And uh, you can see here, the interface is very, very similar to what you get in the other um, libraries that they offer. When you click the switch up top, you get the smart delay, which uh, brightens up the background. You get the atomic bomb, right? Uh, with the mushroom cloud. And then this is the performance page. You can trigger the vibrato, how much there is, a velocity staccato trigger, hard velocity is, triggers a long scoop. So kind of those, then you have the articulations at the bottom and key switches here, which you can trigger by clicking those key switches at the bottom, which we'll demonstrate in just a second. And then here in the sound tab, you have the microphone position. So here I'll, I will demonstrate the close mic first. In the atomic uh, trumpet, I will show you the room mic. And then finally, I'll show you the tape microphone as well. And then here in the controls, we have, again, the vibrato, speed, amount, and you can uh, tweak that. Um, they have other videos going over the entire interface and stuff, but I, I just want to get into the sound myself. So let's kind of hear how this sounds like. We'll start with the alto sax. This is, again, in real time, but what we get into... Uh, these patches here, I'll demonstrate the smart delay. So 
let's hear the uh, alto sax first go through the articulations as well. Yeah, so those are some of the basic articulations you get there, actually all of them that uh, we just covered. But what's interesting is a lot of these special effects or the more specialized articulations, they naturally redirect back to one of the core articulations once you've triggered them. So for example, if I wanna play like a whole step trill and I, play, I click that key switch, which is the F sharp, and then I play that, you can see right away, it defaults back to legato, the articulation. So the next notes I play, are back to the legato, which is kind of cool, right? Because mo most likely you're not going to be playing multiple trills in a row in a uh, you know in that type of performance. So it's just an interesting way to do that. And uh, if you want to play multiple special effects in a row, you could just repeatedly click that key switch if you wanted to. Um, the only niggle I'm hearing here is just for the scoop. Sometimes, um, right? You 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 definitely hear that scoop. And sometimes it kind of comes in kind of suddenly on that final note, like da da. Oops, sorry. Let me find that one more time. There it is. Oops. Like for some of them, it's super smooth. Like you go, but yeah, like that B flat's really nice. But I think some of them, you get that, especially that tongued attack on that on that final note the target note so that's something to keep in mind you might not actually like that in real time but maybe in smart delay it actually fixes that for you you know but that just goes to show like in real time you can kind of fiddle around with your articulations you don't necessarily need to commit to the performance right away and you definitely want to do all your tweaking in real time then turn on smart delay move everything four beats back and then you know let the machine do its work so anyway, that's kind of the uh, the alto uh, sax. And then let's move on to the lead trumpet here. And uh, here we're going to listen to the room microphone. For now, I'm actually, I'll turn off the bleed, but let's have a listen to the trumpet here.
yeah, like that that sound in the room, it's not necessarily super reverberant. Like there's no long tail, but the the placement of the trumpet in that room, um, it really just treats the reflections in a really beautiful way. You know, you can hear the volume, you can you can hear the passion, um, that volume really in in the in the room. It just really comes through so well. And so let me throw in the bleed mic a little bit too. It just adds to that effect a bit more. So let's have a listen. Off, on. Off. Definitely a cleaner sound without the bleed mic. On. Yeah, that just strengthens the sound even further. Right? Like you can really hear those reflections kind of bouncing around the, the room and giving it that extra bit of beef in there. So that's really, really cool. And yeah, um, one interesting thing to note, again, we mentioned at the beginning is that most of the, the, the library here is focused on the fortissimo dynamic. There really is no um, piano MP type of performances here. Uh, this library basically covers 85 to 90% of our big band writing in terms of the loud sections. So we really want to make sure that we take advantage of that. And then finally, the trombone, which is so difficult to get right in sample land, but when you turn on Smart Delay, it just, it's, it's a world of difference. But let's have a quick listen here. So yeah, the tape mic has kind of a warmer sound there, slightly darker than the close and the room. I mean, the room specifically is meant for that uh, blaring type of sound that really captures the room sound, right? But the tape is <clears throat> kind of a, a nice alternative to the close, a little bit warmer, maybe a little dirtier if you want to put it that way. And especially when combined with the bleed, um, it just has a really unique signature, which is nice. I forgot to show some of those articulations on the trumpet. So I really quickly, let's run through those. So yeah, that's kind of a basic overview of how these instruments function in the real time anyway. And again, just to recap here, the real time is best if you are just outlining your performance, you're making sure that you have the right articulation selected. So when you play back the MIDI, you hear it in real time, right? Then when you're satisfied with your key switches, the way you've laid out your performance, your miking and everything like that, that's when you then switch to Smart Delay. So let's take a quick look at that. <clears throat> so we're gonna go into the trumpets here, separate track. And I've loaded up here um, the trumpets one through four. 
And just so you know, the Trumpet 1 and Trumpet 2 patches feature the same player, but Trumpet 2 features the um, different samples and different micings, I believe. That's what Trey said. And so uh, playing unisons here are fine. You're not going to get a phasing effect with the same sample layered on top of itself. Um, one other cool little nugget to note is that in the snapshots here, if you come here to the drop-down menu, they give you two options. The close, which I believe just has the close microphone, and then the in the section preset, which includes the room mic as well. You can see here, close and room are both loaded in. And that's kind of what went, that's what I went for here in the shout chorus. So when we hear that, you'll hear that you get a really close sound, but in addition, you kind of hear that room sound in there as well. <clears throat> but yes, now let's hear it with smart delay a little bit. So here is trumpet one. Yeah, so basically everything I'm playing is uh, picked up by the script and it's outputting the performance with smart delay four beats later. And I, I, don't, I don't think it depends really on what your BPM is, but as long as your performance is pulled back four beats, then the script has the time to kind of go through, analyze the performance and then spit out the, uh, the result, you know? So that's the lead trumpet. You can hear it's, uh, it, it's quite loud, right? Especially when you bring in that room mic, you really hear how that sings out nicely. Let's uh, have a little bit of a listen to Atomic Trumpet number two. Again, we're just using the legato articulation here, but all of a sudden the performance is sound a lot smoother, a lot more realistic with those nuances there that you don't get in the real time. Yeah, so it's a little bit um, difficult to kind of keep, uh, concentrate on the line I'm playing when the line is being outputted four beats later. So there's a bit of a disconnect there, but it's still so much fun to hear how the line just automatically comes to life when you turn on the smart delay. So the script is really doing some work there. So you do sacrifice the, obviously the real time, but the results you get is just a no brainer. So smart delay is really what makes this, this library and all the accompanying libraries um, really come to life here. So. That's the trumpets there. Let's kind of uh, really quickly listen to the trombones. Yeah, and the trombones are, are super impressive to me. Uh, one of the highlights of the library for sure. So let's have a listen. Yeah, like I, I just can't believe how real that sounds. Um, I, I've heard real trombones player, uh, sorry, trombone players play, especially in this type of idiom, and this pretty much sounds exactly kind of like that, and it's just amazing to me. Um, trombones are so hard to get right, and that's that's one of the reasons I'm actually scared to use trombones in a lot of orchestral mock-up work because they kind of sound pretty unrealistic, or at least the brassiness and the the harshness of the timbre that can come from samples really is evident in a lot of libraries. But in this case, once you turn on Smart Delay, they have that but like right once they hit that initial attack, they kind of fade away. 
And that's so, so cool. They have that punch, but then they know exactly when to uh, taper away from the note as well. Really beautiful. Trombone number two. Yeah, so apologies if some of those instruments are a little bit quieter, but I think maybe it's just the way that uh, you have the the panning and the kind of the balance is set up so that they sound um, appropriate to how they would sound in an actual section, you know? So the lead trombone is definitely the loudest in the trombone section and the corresponding trumpet and the alto or the sax is the same way. Cool. And then finally, let's hear the saxes. <clears throat> so again, sticking with your legato articulation here, um, let's have a listen to alto sax one. Yeah, so forgive some of those sloppy performances, but you get a sense of how those instruments sound and the fact that they all have smart delay makes it so easy to kind of just take one track that you've already put together and then just copy and paste, make sure of course the voicings are correct and everything like that. You have the key switches that you want, but in general, it's gonna be a very consistent sound because the script is working the same way across all the different instruments, right? So uh, as long as your miking is pretty similar, you know, you haven't set up the way you want, then uh, you, you just wanna make sure the smart delay is turned on for our, all the instruments here. So I'm just gonna go back through, make sure I have smart delay turned on and we'll have a listen to, um, we'll have a listen to the shout chorus. So there we go. And you know what I'll do actually first, I might, um, 
I'll show you the, the real performance first. Let me let me find that really quickly here. Yeah, so here's the song. Uh, I just want to show you the shout chorus here, and then I'll play through the shout chorus uh, with the Atomic Group band. So have a listen to this. Grand. Okay, that's the sh the shout chorus with uh, real live players, and of course you have the drums and the and the bass in there. So naturally, it's going to sound even better. But uh, here is the example with just the horns. Excuse me, using Atomic Big Band and the Smart Delay. So it blows me away every time that it can come pretty close to the real thing. And this is completely exposed, right, without any other instruments as well. And one little thing I want to show you here is, uh, first of all, you see we have these key switches at the bottom. I don't actually have too many key switches, actually. One smart thing about the script is that if you play relatively short notes, I believe the script actually goes through and picks staccato or staccatissimo samples accordingly. So you don't always have to put in the key switch unless you really want to make sure it's triggering the, the exact, you know, note length that you're going for. So the first attempt I made at this mock-up didn't sound as good because um, there were some unwanted scoops in there. There were a couple little bugs here and there that I kind of talked with Trey about and he kind of worked out. But one of the main reasons I was triggering some unwanted samples was because the notes were actually not long enough. So what I had to do was go through and I actually had to extend some of the notes. And what that did was pull different samples from the sample pool and then insert them into the performance, which allowed some of the notes to feel maybe more legato, more connected, or maybe eliminate some of the scoops in the sax soli and so on and so forth. So just uh, make sure that you're massaging your MIDI notes. You can also trigger the velocity, the mod wheel, the, you know, the expression volume stuff. And the script takes all of that into account when deciding which samples to pull in for your smart delay performance. So just keep that in mind. Let me play through this just one more time so you can see how that all looks. And then I'll kind of scroll through at the same time. Here we go. Oops, sorry. Here we go. So here's the key switches at the bottom. Staccato. Back to legato. Shapes. Notice everything's four beats behind, by the way. Trombones here. Trum trumpets come back in. Saxes. Trumpets back in. Trombones. And then the trumpet sound trumbles finish. And there you go. So look, I am it look, it's not gonna sound a hundred percent realistic, right? But the fact that we can get this far with sample libraries is just simply incredible. So a lot of people have been asking straight ahead samples, like what are you gonna do with orchestral instruments? Are you gonna expand to maybe fill out the rest of the jazz orchestra, flugel, horn, soprano, sax, all that kind of stuff? And um you know, naturally they can't give us too much information yet, but they've hinted at possibilities that these things are all going to happen. So it will be really exciting to see how they flesh out the rest of the lineup. And uh, I'm personally pretty excited to finish my jazz orchestra as well. And I'm even considering removing some older libraries that uh, are not to this standard, um, just to make room on my hard drive and um, yeah, just keep the things that I really want to use on a day-to-day -day basis. So just to quickly recap here, I mean, Straight Ahead Samples has done Honestly, and I, I'm not I'm not a shill for them or anything. This is just my personal honest opinion, but they have done some incredible work in the last couple of years when it comes to scripting and sampling for jazz. Um, I don't think any other library has really come to this sort of, I don't want to say effort, but they haven't really come up with this sort of script to read your performances, you know, incorporate a little bit of delay to allow the script time to analyze your performance and then spit out a performance that sounds realistic and very idiomatic to what jazz players would actually do. It's 
something that I think that uh, could be incorporated into orchestral instruments in the future. And they're actually considering doing this straight ahead samples. Um, naturally, it's a little bit more difficult because taking into account the larger room sound and the, and the hall and the, the reverb, and that can become a little fiddly. But generally, um, with this type of stuff, I'm, I'm very impressed with, with how far they've come in just a few short years. And again, I'm really looking forward to what they do in the future. So I hope you've enjoyed this kind of walkthrough with me. I know it was a little bit longer of a video, but I wanted to show you as much as I could from this library while keeping the length manageable. So thank you again for watching. Again, if you wanna uh, take a look at some of my other recommendations, including this library, then definitely check out my sample library buyer's guide in the description box below. It's 100% free, and it's a comprehensive look at all of my recommendations from orchestral instruments, all the way down to jazz libraries, piano libraries, some ethnic libraries. It's um, super didactic, super comprehensive. And if you want to grab it, you can keep it with you at any time. And if you want to refer to my personal thoughts on a certain library and you're wondering whether I'm sharing that library in the guide, then I want to give that to you a totally free and you can, uh, you can refer to it anytime. So thank you again for watching. I appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next video and take care. Bye-bye.